Broadcasting from various countries around the world using voice over IP technology, this is VoIP Uncovered, a VoIP on Solutions UK podcast. I'm Kathleen Reed. Joining us today are two of the three founders of FreeSwitch, Mike Jarris and Anthony Minicelli. Thank you for joining us today, guys. It's been a year since we last spoke, and I understand FreeSwitch has had some great new solutions that make it far more accessible to businesses than other products on the market. And I'm sure there are some other cool new features that are available to developers. So what's new in FreeSwitch in general? It's uh, It's been a busy year for us. Uh, we've been uh, working a, a lot on our stabilization and commercialization on many fronts. We just hired a full-time employee to work on a free switch stable branch. The stable branch is more targeted for uh, businesses that are trying to you know, produce products, uh, ha- have an expectation of stability, um, maybe not get all the bleeding edge features, but uh, something that can be deployed uh, a-, a little bit more widely and have, have less problems you might expect. Uh, along with that, we've also started binary packaging of free switch. Again, it's uh, a-, a way to get software out there easier um, for people who may not be developers. On top of that, from a commercial standpoint, we've been working on a commercial PBX called Kudatel, which is an appliance product that um, leverages all of that stability, plus a whole bunch of ease of use features, uh, such as provisioning and uh, web user interface. We've also added a new feature called HTTAPI. HTTAPI, okay, I've been eager to hear more about this. So as I understand it, it lets businesses use developers with skills outside of the IVR realm. This really broadens FreeSwitch's reach, making once complicated solutions, well, rather accessible. Why don't you give us a background of this technology, what it gives businesses, and what they should look for in hiring someone to make it work? HTTP is essentially it's a kind of telephony API over HTTP, so it's kind of glued together, HTTP. Uh, basically, if you think of the paradigm of a web application, where you have your browser is the client talking to a web server. There's a lot of infrastructure for using web-based programming. Uh, You know, there's libraries and other things for using session-based kinds of web applications. And so HTTP takes your phone call that comes in from any random technology, um, goes into free switch and executes the application and allows it to act sort of like a web browser in the sense of a phone. So it'll go to the web server and deliver information about the call, and then using the same techniques that you would on a a typical web application, you can gather the data, and then you send back a very small message with markup in it that tells it to do certain things, like to play a file, and then to get you to type something, and then it will post again the results, similar to if you were filling out a form in the web, only you don't have all the luxury of the person being able to to look at the page and fill out the form. You have to do it with things you can do over any kind of phone. So you're limited to stuff like you can say stuff and have it try and detect it. Um, You can play, ask them to type digits, or you can tell them to speak and record it. Um, So you can do all those things with a small amount of markup. And that way it kind of focuses on the the higher level things of what you're trying to do versus uh, if you try and make an IVR right on the server, there's lots of awesome things you can do, but you have to have a higher skill set to be able to program some of it. Um, And we have some existing um, embeddable scripting that you can do to make stuff like that, but you have to have access to the server. So this has the dual purpose of simplifying it and externalizing it so you can actually lock down the things you don't want people to be able to do and offer, say, customers or people that you just don't want on your server, but that you want to give them the ability to have some kind of say in what happens during the call um, so they can write their program on their own server and free switch calls to there. And you can do everything without ever getting into the server yourself and have limited control. So if it's just, say, like you want to make a small thing that says, please dial an extension, you could make that just with a few with a small web application that would play the file saying please dial the extension you're looking for and then it'll collect it and then tell the system to transfer to where they dial um, without having to interact directly with the server just by sending it that message. 
Um, so why don't you give us a background of this technology and what it gives businesses and why they sh- and what they should look for in hiring someone to make it work? So the advantages of HTTAPI is it allows you to build voice applications using common web standards. Um, what that gives you, it lets you leverage all of your web developers, their knowledge of language, um, different programming languages, and all of your web uh, infrastructure to build voice applications. So um, building a voice application is as easy as building a form on a web page. Uh, let's say you as a company have a, um, a library so you can access your customer database, and you use that um, to find your customers uh, for a, a web support form. You can leverage that exact same code um, and just write a little bit more of the same guy who writes your web form uh, to have an IVR where they call in and they enter in their, um, their account number or maybe it uses that same code where it looks up their phone number that they called in on. Um, and that can be done with the same skill set, same programming languages, uh, as you would for your uh, web applications. Uh, as far as who to hire, um, hopefully you don't need to hire anyone else. You can just call the same guy up who you uh, use to uh, build your website or maybe you have him in-house and he should already have all the skills necessary to uh, build a voice application. Sounds really good. So we know Free Search integrates really well with Sangoma. So why is this relationship so close, and what's makes, what makes Sangoma and FreeSwitch such a good solution to use instead of, say, other cards or gateways? Tony, you want to grab this one? Well, we've been working with Sangoma since before we even started writing FreeSwitch. Uh, we worked with them on the Asterix project, and we basically have had an ongoing relationship for nearly six or seven years now. and they worked with us pretty closely all along. So um, what makes them a good solution is their involvement with us since they actually participate in the project now. We have the Free TDM project, which is a part of Free Switch that's dedicated to TDM and hardware interfaces, um, and they maintain that part of the code. And so we work together and help each other with solving issues. And so it's pretty much a results of a, a long relationship we've had with them. I think another advantage uh, is since we've worked so closely together on an engineering level, um, Sangoma is very much um, the experts uh, in providing hardware that just works and uh, we, we've spent years becoming experts in you know VoIP and uh, saw switching and because we work together at an engineering level, we bring all of that knowledge to the table, and I think we deliver a superior solution uh, because we bring so many you know, experts in all of the related areas uh, to the table you know, when we write the code. Okay, sounds good, guys. Um, so, ClueCon, is it happening again this year? Yes. So where is it? Who's on the speaker lineup? And, and why should Voice Bonds listeners make the trip? Um, so the uh, the day is now confirmed as uh, in Chicago, August 7th through 9th of uh, this year. It's at the uh, Wyndham Hotel where we've been in the past. Um, we are still working on the on the speaker list. We have speakers uh, who've already requested to speak. They include John from Onsip, um, T. R. Misner, um, Stefan Wintermeyer, uh, who has a PBX that's based on free switch. Um, Douglas Huber from Isus, um, Travis Cross, who's an active member of the free switch community, um, and Phil Zimmerman, um, and possibly somebody from IBM, which I don't know much about. Is there anyone else uh, that you know of, Tony, confirmed? We don't have any other confirmed ones at the moment, but we do have a lot of ones in the air. Um, we're six months out now from the show, so there'll still be a little more work to getting the speakers list filled in. It's a great chance to get to see Chicago, which is an awesome city, and learn about all the different things in VoIP. We've had lots of uh, people tell us that just one trip to Kuchan has taught them more than taking classes. And stuff. 
stuff like that. It's a more formal environment, but the knowledge is transferred through interacting with people versus just sitting and listening. There's not, there's classroom style presentations, but at the same time you can talk to the people after it's over. And we have a uh, open lunch where there's a two hour session of everyone just getting to know each other and talking about the various things. And it almost always stirs up some kind of new project or idea um, that comes out and shows up in the future. The free switch was born out of the first KuCon. Yeah, that's for sure. You know, that's one thing I always have to say is that, you know, when I went to KluCon, that's when I learned the most about this industry. It was just it was just a phenomenal conference to attend to actually learn if you don't really know a lot about it going in or even if you do, right? So I really do want to take the time to thank you both, Mike and Anthony, for joining us today and telling us about the latest developments with FreeSwitch and um, bringing us up to speed on KluCon. This has been a Voipon VoIP Uncovered VoIP podcast brought to you by Voipon Solutions. For more information, please visit www.voipon.co.uk.